I have got some brilliant ideas for you. Now, it's Inktober right now, and we're in the middle. I've been rocking socks on it. I have every picture that I've done. I'm not putting up every picture, but I have been doing it every day. And I'm sort of going to be switching some things around on it. I really want to learn how to hand letter. I want to learn calligraphy. This is the month to get the inspiration on. And for the second part of the month, I'm going to stop doing pictures. And there's a reason for that, which we'll get into. But I'm going to start working on my hand lettering. I didn't realize I have my weight in gold here. I have a whole case of the Ohu Hulu Ohuhu Ohuhu I can't pronounce that markers and 90% of them are dry. They're old, they dried up, I live in the desert. I had to actually blow the dust off of them. That's how long it's been since I've used them. These things are fantastic. I love Copic markers. What's not to love? A Copic marker is like the top of the line. These markers accept Copic ink. Not only do they accept Copic ink, but the nibs are interchangeable with Copic nibs. If you have old dried out markers, and a lot of people like these, but they're disposable. You can't, they don't sell the ink to fill these. If you buy, now this one, you see it's dry. The nibs remove. You can buy Copic nibs. They will fit into the Ahu chambers. Fill it up with the refillable Copic ink and you have a full set. Put it to you this way, if we want to be cheap. These markers are, are on about 40, say $40, just rounded out. I believe they're cheaper than $40, but $40 for these markers. Copic markers are roughly $8 a piece. Now you can get them cheaper if you get, um, if you go to Hobby Lobby and use a coupon, of course this cheaper. Before I forget, Macari, the site, Macari.com, They've got Copic markers for sale, $30 for a set, but they're somebody's old dry set. Buy them if you see them, because at eight bucks a piece, they're all refillable. The nibs, they run about $3 for a set of nibs, and you got a brand new marker. So now I have these already. They're dry, they're useless. I'm gonna be cleaning all of these out replacing the nibs and all you have to do is use on here put a label on it you can write in a label put tape over it if you need to and you have a full set of copic markers this set here once i'm done would be about a three to four hundred dollar set so it's something to think about Brooklyn means blessing was talking to me about the prices of the blending markers and they are expensive especially they don't last very long and I agree with her on that but there is a DIY that you can do that's infinitely cheaper pennies on the marker and all you have to do now this is lavender spirit This one is full already, but I'll take it, I'll do it anyway. Take this out, put a clean nib in. This is an old nib that was dry, but it works anyway, and it doesn't even blend marker onto my paper. Add in, just like that, these pipettes are dirt cheap on Amazon. I think I bought a bazillion of them for under five dollars. Put a clean nib in, or even I'm using a dirty nib. Didn't matter. Now I had been using it with some red, 
and that's why you see a red tinge on it. And let's get, this you'll be able to see really well. You can use any blending medium that you want, Gamsol, um, odorless mineral spirits, lavender spike. And there you go. It works perfectly. Pennies. Cleans off the same way any anyone would clean it. And there you have a clean blending brush. It's wet, that's why you see it. And it probably does have a little bit of the ink on it, but not anything to change up. I wouldn't use this on yellow, but for any darker color, yeah, I would. But just use a clean tip. I'm changing up what I'm doing. And for the first two weeks, I was doing pictures. The second two weeks, I'm going to be doing um, lettering. And it's for my own personal. But... I did a picture that I need a basically a vote on. <laughs> I need to put Prismacolor on this picture. I know it's Inktober. I know this is the final picture, but it's my art. And I really need Prismacolor. My magic markers are shot. I don't want to buy any more magic markers until I clean out this set. I'm not cleaning it out right now. I don't have the time. And I need color on this picture. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use a little bit of Prismacolor. I know it's not the rules, but it's my art. My rules. <laughs> and the, I, the whole entire idea of this is to get out there and just do it. Get those pens out. There are my pens. And I have used all of them. Out with Blue Robin, I have a question. What do you do when the name and number is not clear to read anymore or has partially rubbed off? Is there some kind of label to stick on them? Hi, Robin. I have a couple of ideas that you might like. Now, the first one is more obvious is that you get a label maker. I have the P-Touch, the Brother P-Touch. I love it. Uh, the only complaint I have about it is that the display does not light up, so it's kind of hard to read the display. I have to hit the light just right, but I'm sure that they've made improvements since I got this. This is a couple of years old, but it works fantastic, so I'm not complaining. So it comes out in different sizes. I know I printed one out huge. I would not put that on pencil. You cannot grind these. No, nothing can be ground in your sharpener that has glue on it because you will gunk it up really quickly. The It has to be removed. Um, also, if you buy individual pencils, don't forget to take the little price barcode off uh, because if that goes through the um, sharpener, you're not going to be happy, either the electric or the hand sharpener, because it will gunk it up and it's over. So you can do this. They come off really easy. Maybe not as easy as I thought, but they, no, they do. And they just peel off nice and clean. So that's one idea. Another idea, and this is not going to help you now because you have to relabel your pencils, but next time you get pencils, take a little bit of nail polish, clear nail polish, and just go over it. Let it dry and your problem is solved. It won't come off. I have a lot of trouble reading silver foil. My eyesight is not that great, so silver foil is um, my enemy. I'm just lucky I memorized the pencils, and I can, I can tell you what pencil from across the room something is. So those are my two ideas, and I hope one of them helps you. Kathy Emmerich wrote, she's gorgeous, thank you. 
Was there a specific reason for using the smaller side of the blender? Um, I didn't. <laughs> this Prismacolor comes with a brush tip and a nib, um, a bullet nib. So here you have the bullet nib, and I rarely use it. Last time I used, I guess I was, I had red. Needs a little cleaning, but that's the bullet nib, and this is the brush which technically on some of the other blenders, they have a bullet and a chisel tip, which I think is what you're thinking of as being the large size. On these, if you're gonna use the chisel tip, you can change out your tips. Patricia Moore wants to know how long the Batgirl picture took. So if I had to guess, I would say four hours a day, probably 12 hours to finish that picture of constant work. Onika Tongs was writing to me and we were going back and forth. So this is something that we've both been talking about was price of pencils and the quality. And they were asking me about Arteza. And fortunately, I, ever since I did that light fast test, I'll leave the link in the description. I'm not a fan of Arteza, only because they completely flopped on my light fast test. And I, I do have a pencil though that is in your budget and just as good my sheep and farbins, sheepier farbins, whatever they're called. These are my favorite inexpensive pencils. This is my second set. So that's why they're, they're practically new, but I do use them. And the quality, they're oil pencils. The quality is great. They feel great in the hands. They're not as creamy as Prismacolor. They lay down closer to Polychromos, but once you get used to them, they are fantastic to use. You can find them on Amazon and they're about the same price as, if not cheaper, than Arteza. One of my subscribers, Autumn Dawn, is working on this picture. Now hers looks way better than mine. And that's because I had to lighten her picture. It was too dark to print. And then my printer is almost out of ink. So this is the best I can get it. But it'll work. Autumn is working on this area and she wants to know how to do leather, black leather specifically. My recommendation for doing black leather is to use a marker. It is going to produce the highest quality black better than any pen. And when you want that striking light difference, especially with this picture, because you've done such a kick butt job on the gold, I want to show you it with the pen. And this is really super easy. All you do is bring your blending in like such. Wherever you want the highlight to go. Now, I know on your picture it's striking right there because you have your highlight here, here, here. And so your light is coming in from the front. So you're going to want to keep your highlight going in the same direction. Also, the legs are cylinders. Just like this, it's a cylinder. Where is the light? You could see it on here. The light goes up and down. It never goes this way. Even if I turned it that way, the light would still follow the shape of the cylinder. So we're gonna put that highlight right in the middle. And it goes really quick. 10 minutes and you're done and you'll have perfect leather.
light is going to disperse, not straight. So you're not going to want this leather to have a straight edge. So you're going to kind of go in like that. You can leave some other marks on here as the leather picks up some of the other highlights around. But that's your artistic liberty. see it's already beginning to look like shiny leather now because you're working on ink medium instead of using your Pasca I do recommend a gel pen Okay, I have the Jelly Roll pen, and if you get a, a rogue spot, you can cover it up and just whiten it up. Jelly Roll pens do not work really great over um, wax. So I wouldn't gunk your pencil up using, uh, I wouldn't gunk your pen up using wax, just marker. <coughs> and that goes for all gel pens. And that goes for all gel pens. They don't work great. They'll stop working and they'll be all clogged up. So if you're working over pencil, use Pasca. And if you're working on ink, magic marker, use, use gel pen. And there you have leather. You want less of a highlight, just put more. You want more of a highlight, just add your gel. You can now work on the belt if you want. You can do the belt in black. Leave a little bit of a white space. certain things that all coloring book artists or artists in general should have and that's some good markers fine liners and your whiting material I have just about everything I like to try new products and see what works best on what And I love them all for different reasons. I love my pit pens because they're opaque. And I love my pit pens because they're translucent. And I can get sort of like a grayed look. I love my gel pen. For doing wand work. easy that was and you got your leather you could do the same thing with the cape I'm only gonna do one portion of it
Now remember, you can also use black pen, pen. If you don't like that inky look on your paper, you can always take your black and go over it. Now, if you don't want to use your uh, marker at all, just follow the same thing, the same way with a black pencil, putting your highlight in the same direction. And that's how you do it. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that like and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell for all notifications. For another video just like this one, I recommend this. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Keep on coloring.